Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Simply Learn. Today we will learn about abstract classes in Java. But before we begin, please subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update on the trending technologies in the current IT industry. Also, if you're interested in learning more about the Java programming language, then please visit the Simply Learn official website where you can learn more about Java and its latest trends in the current IT. Now, without further ado, let us quickly start with our agenda for today's session. First, we will have a brief discussion about abstract classes, more like an introduction. Next, we will discuss the major features of the abstract classes that give it an edge in the object-oriented programming. Followed by that, we will discuss the crucial rules to be followed to use abstract classes. Next, in the docket, we will understand the definition of abstraction and the ways through which we can achieve it. Later, we will have a briefing about the interface which also acts as a means to achieve abstraction. Once we have the right understanding of an abstract class and an interface, we will head directly into executing some of the examples based on abstract classes to understand the concept in a much better way. After this, we will learn some of the key differences between the abstract class and an interface. Finally, we will wind up the session by understanding the major advantages and disadvantages of abstract classes. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. Now, our first topic. What is an abstract class? The answer is, abstraction is one of the keys to achieving an object-oriented programming approach in designing a software. Here, the programmer tries to hide the complicated implementation of the code which makes the software run smoothly. Most of the time, the user isn't interested to know how the code is being implemented. So, through abstraction, we can just hide it. To do so, we use an abstract class or sometimes an interface based on the requirement. So, Abstract class in Java is considered as a template of methods and variables which are used in a program. Remember, abstract classes cannot be instantiated directly. Now moving ahead, we will next learn the important features of abstract classes. So the first one is template. The main reason programmers prefer to use abstract methods is because they act as a predefined template for any future specific class that you might use. Next, loose coupling is a procedure where an internal object gets the necessary method or a different object from the external world, that is, other than the current working project. The use of abstract classes makes this process possible. After that, we have the code reusability. Implementation of the abstract classes provides the developers with one of the greatest features that saves time which is none other than the code reusability. Followed by code reusability, we have abstraction. As discussed earlier, data abstraction is the process of hiding certain details and showing only essential information to the user. Abstraction can be achieved with either abstract classes or interfaces. Last but not the least, dynamic method resolution. The abstract classes enable us with dynamic method resolution or the dynamic method dispatch process. The dynamic method resolution is a mechanism by which a call to an overridden method is resolved at runtime. This is how Java implements runtime polymorphism. When an overridden method is called by reference, Java determines which version of that method to execute based on the type of object it refers to. Now, these were the few important features of abstract classes. Next in the docket is the crucial rules to be followed to use abstract classes. All right, let us go through the rules one by one as mentioned below. The first one is the keyword abstract is mandatory to declare an abstract class. Followed by that, the next rule says that abstract classes cannot be instantiated directly. The third one is an abstract class must have at least one abstract method. Next to that we have 
another rule which says an abstract class includes final methods. Next, an abstract class may also include non-abstract methods. It's not mandatory that an abstract class should only include abstract methods. So the last rule says that an abstract class can include constructors and static methods. So these were some crucial rules to be followed to use abstract classes in Java. So far, we have discussed the definition of abstract classes, its features and the rules to use abstract classes in Java. Now, we will learn how to achieve abstraction in Java. So basically, there are two different ways to achieve abstraction in Java. The first way is by using abstract classes and the next one is by using an interface. Now, this brings us to our next topic that is the syntax to be followed to use an abstract class and an abstract method. To declare an abstract class, we use the keyword called abstract. Followed by that, we use the keyword called class. Then after that, we declare the name of our class. The name of the class is up to the user's choice. For example, I have named my class as simply learn as shown here. Followed by the abstract class, we have the abstract method. To declare an abstract method, we use the keyword called abstract. Then the written type of the method. As of now, I have used void. Then later we have the name of the method that is based on the user's choice. As you can see, I have used simply learn as the name of the method. So this was by using abstract class method. The next one is by using an interface method. Now what exactly is an interface? So interface can be defined as a boundary between the method and the class implementing it. In Java, we use interface to achieve abstraction. In other words, we can also consider interface as a container which saves the signatures of the methods used in a program. Now we will move ahead and understand the syntax to use an interface to achieve abstraction in Java. To declare an interface, we use the keyword called interface. Followed by that, we declare the name of a class. The class name is up to the user's choice. For example, I have named my class as simply learn as shown below. As discussed earlier, interface acts just as a container that stores only the signatures of the method. We cannot have a complete method defined inside it. All we can do is just declare an interface. Now that we have a detailed explanation about the abstract class and the interface, let us look into some example programs based on abstract classes. Now we have successfully booted the Eclipse IDE. Now let's create a new project. So to create a new project, just click on create a project. And this should give you a dialog box wherein you have to select Java project. Click next. Now let us give a name to our project. So simply learn will be the name of my project here. Now let me click on finish to finish this process. As you can see, the project has been successfully created. And inside the project simply learn, we have the source file and right clicking the source file will give us a drop box where you can just select new and inside new, you can select a new package. Now let's name the package as abstraction and click on finish to create the package. Moving further, let's right click on the package and select new and from new, select a class to create a new class. So the name of my class will be employee. Let's click on finish to create the class. Now we have our employee class ready. Now let's right click on the package and select new and inside that let us select another class and the name of this particular class will be person which will act as our abstract class. So as you can see 
We have declared this particular class with the keyword abstract and the name of the class is person. So our first example which is based on employees where we will have an abstract class called person and this person class will be inherited by the employee class and gets executed to generate employee details. Now let us try to execute this program and see the output. To execute the program just right click on the package and go to the run option and select the first one that is Java application. Now you can see we have the employee named Pavitra and the gender is female and the employee has logged in successfully. So these are the details which we were expecting to be presented on the output console. Now moving ahead, we shall execute our next example which will be based on students. So here the class student is the abstract class and three different student classes namely Raju, Pranita and Punit will inherit the student class and generate the output that displays their particular ranks. So you can see our abstract class that is student is being declared using the keyword abstract and inside that we have an abstract method which is get rank. And these classes that are Raju, Pranita and Punit will inherit the abstract class student and display their ranks. Now let us try to execute this program and see the output. As you can see the three classes have successfully inherited the abstract class and displayed their ranks on the output console. Now let us move ahead and try to execute one last example based on abstract classes. So the third and last example is based on interest rates provided by different banks. Here we have an abstract class named loan and all the banks described in the program will inherit the loan abstract class to calculate the rate of interest on the loans provided by them. As you can see we have the abstract class that is loan and inside that we have the abstract method which is interest. So we have the classes Andhra Bank, Bank of Baroda, IDBC Bank, State Bank of India which are inheriting the abstract class called loan and the method interest to display their rates of interest. Now let us try to execute this program and see the output. As you can see the program got successfully executed and the rate of interest for loans from different banks has been displayed in the output console. So with this we have entered into our next topic where we understand the differences between an abstract class and an interface. So the first difference between the both is the keyword. While we declare an interface, we use the keyword called interface. On the other hand, when we declare an abstract class, we use the keyword abstract. Followed by that, the second difference is, when you use an interface, the subclasses basically implement an interface. While on the other hand, when you use abstract classes, the subclasses extend an abstract class and inherit the properties of the abstract class. Followed by that, the third difference is multiple interfaces can be implemented. But on the other hand, only one abstract class can be extended at one particular instance. And the final difference between the both is interface is capable to support multiple inheritance whereas on the other hand abstract classes are not capable to support multiple inheritances. Multiple inheritance is none other than the diamond problem which is not supported in Java. Now that we have understood the differences between the both let us understand the major advantages and disadvantages of using an abstract class. Now first we will discuss the advantages. So the advantages of using an abstract class in Java are the abstract classes are highly beneficial in writing shorter codes. The abstract classes avoid code duplication. They enable code reusability which is a major advantage. And finally the last advantage is changes to the internal code implementation can be done 
without affecting the classes. So these were few of the major advantages of using an abstract class. Now moving ahead, we shall discuss the disadvantages of using abstract classes. Few of the disadvantages of using an abstract class in Java are Abstraction is expensive as sometimes you need to handle cases and situations which are not necessary. Followed by that, the second disadvantage is Object relational impedance mismatch in the case of RDBMS and the last disadvantage is Object relational mapping in case of frameworks like Hibernate. So these are the few important disadvantages of using abstract classes in Java that you need to consider before using them into your project. Now with this, we have come to an end of this session on abstract classes in Java. I hope this session was helpful. If you have any queries based on the abstract classes in Java or any questions related to the Java programming language, then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and we will have your questions answered by our experts as soon as possible. It's Ravi signing off and don't forget to get subscribed to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive important updates on the trending technologies. Thank you. Until next time. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.